All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about three knives that you aren't an EDC guy if you don't own. Now, of course, that's all facetious, and I will say, by and large, if you have EDC knives, you collect them for a long time, you probably know what's up. But at the same time, too, I thought it'd be cool to go over a handful of knives that I think are genuinely pretty impactful and talk about them a little bit. Now, I've gone over a lot of knives, and I feel like I guess there's a fair amount that are impactful, but these are definitely some others that, in my opinion, I feel are pretty darn impactful to the EDC community. And we're gonna go from least expensive to most expensive. So starting off, we're gonna go over the Red Rat One. Now, honestly, this knife is the Ontario Knife Company or OKC Rat Model One. Now this one is a little bit more fancy or maybe Gucci in the fact that it offers Red G10 and CPM S35 VN for its blade steel. But truthfully speaking, like any, um, rat model one i think is pretty darn impactful because the rat model one is one of those just general utility knives that it isn't a looker it isn't necessarily the highest performer though it is pretty high performance with this blade steel um but it just works like it just it just does what you need it to do and it's one of those knives too that even in its most expensive trims like this one still come in under a hundred dollars so you're not really going to feel that bad if you you know cut open a bag of gravel with it and you get some chips in the blade or you know you pop some zip ties off with it you know like it's going to do pretty good with those types of tasks and honestly too i will say like it's just a pretty well set up blade shape blade um overall like length and uh yeah it's just usable and the full flat grind definitely helps with it being naturally pretty slicey but yet it is still pretty durable because you have a good amount of thickness behind that edge. I would say it's just overall a really good EDC knife. I even like that it's not official and maybe not quite safe, but you can definitely still choke up on that blade and get real close to that cutting edge if you need in a pinch. And that is something that of course I am very biased to, very preferential of, but yeah, the overall I would say that the, the Rat 1 is just a really good all around blade that if you don't have one in your collection, once again, you don't necessarily have to go for the most expensive model of the rat one um, but it is a really good knife to have around for general purpose uh, tasks and duties and i like having it in my collection because it's one of those high performance budget knives that you don't feel bad you know abusing per se but it still offers a lot of really good venerable performance all right next one up and another one that i feel is in a kind of similar boat is going to be the benchmade 940. now i recently re-added the 940 to my collection and honestly i have to say having only owned the aluminum handled version now. I was kind of wrong about this knife. I originally owned the 940-2, which was the black G10 handled version of this. I've handled the carbon fiber versions, but I never actually really handled or used or owned a aluminum handled version of the 940. And I think when having the original kind of 940 in my hand, the aluminum definitely adds a lot better um, centering for weight and feel in the overall knife. It feels a lot more rigid. It feels a lot more uh, hand filling. That being said, it still is a little bit smaller. It's not my absolute favorite, but this is another knife that is very utility oriented and you can tell by the design and I really do like that. I will say this kind of reverse Tonto definitely um, lends its hand very well to getting into places, popping things like zip ties, doing those kind of small EDC tasks. And what I like about it and what I like about this uh, blade shape overall is it very much lends its hand to that very narrow kind of style because the 940 blade shape is very pencil like already so it's very narrow like blade and overall what that does is it just means that you can get very precise with that tip when you're making cuts now of course mine has definitely seen some love i put mine on my wicked edge just to touch it up and restore its sharpness couldn't really do much to the bevel it is definitely running a little bit fat i will probably have to re blade this at some point but overall i will say that the 940 is a pretty cool blade and i think it's definitely worth adding to a long-term knife collection because once again the history is great on them and the performance really is there all right, the next one up that I really think you owe it to yourself, once again, if you've been in the EDC game for a while, I think you really owe it to yourself to check out a Sebenza. Now, my preference is the large Sebenza with either the Insingo grind, which is kind of like a modified Warncliffe drop 
or a Warncliffe uh, sheep's foot blade. It's kind of it teeters between the two, but either the Insingo grind or of course the Tonto like you see here are my preferred blade shapes. The drop point works and it's totally functional, but I feel like if you're going to get a Chris Reeve Sabenza for the fact of like a Sabenza, you should make it special and get a tip shape that is a special tip shape to that knife, right? Like Sabenza's or Chris Reeves as a whole can be offered with Tontos and Singos uh, or their drop point. But I feel like the Insingo is a very unique um, tip. And the Tonto, while not entirely unique, is very, um, like the way Chris Reeve does it is unique. So I do, I would say like get a Tonto or get an Insingo grind. But even if you don't, just a Sabenza, whether it's a 2131, um, both are fantastic variants or flavors, and really they speak to what makes these knives fantastic, like what makes them so comfortable, so usable. I love the large versions of these. The small ones, in my opinion, unless you have smaller hands, um, really don't quite feel quite as hand filling but the large ones give you enough sprawl space that you know you can comfortably hold them for a prolonged period of time in addition to i think that the sabenza especially is very hard to beat in a knife collection for having a knife for more classy events if you have to dress up for an occasion this is a really nice blade for that because these blend into just about any environment and sitting in a pocket they do not scream at all like hey i'm a knife you know like this clip is just very unassuming it's not really knife like at all so it's just a very unassuming knife that's still very practical very usable and just really good looking uh, in my opinion at least but Anyways, those are three knives. I think if you are a knife guy and you don't own any of these, you should at least add one, but preferably you should add them all. Of course, I'm not sponsored to say this. None of these knives were sent to me. I either bought or traded into all of them. And so I'm not really biased to that. Um, you know, like I'm not trying to push knives. I never really am. I just like sharing my experience and kind of my opinion on EDC as a whole. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.